Shepherd's House is a non-denominational church located just a few miles from Glasgow, Kentucky on the Edmonton Road. The Shepherd's House family invites you to Bible study on Sunday at 9 a.m., worship service at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, and the Sunday evening service at 6 p.m. Midweek service at the Shepherd's House is Wednesday at 7 p.m. The Shepherd's House family cordially invites you to any of these services. All right, praise the Lord. For those that's joining us now by <clears throat> by television, uh, I want to let you know that we uh, any of these programs that you see on the air, uh, and you want to send a copy to a friend in a different state or a different country, we have. Uh, video copies, DVDs available, and uh, we'll be telling you at the end of the program uh, what you can do in order uh, to get one of those. Also, I wanted uh, to let the folks know we got our website up, and you'll see that hopefully on the screen uh, from, from now on uh, through the program at different times, and we want to invite you to log on and check us out. I know there's people that have called from the Chicago area uh, that have uh, asked for information on more about our church and more about my ministry and how they can find out more about us because uh, we're a long ways away. You now uh, will have that available. You'll know as much about me uh, as I know about me because everything about me is on there. Uh, all the way to an anniversary video uh, uh, tells all about my entire family from when I was a little boy all the way up to now and uh, we'll have pictures coming soon. Uh, on the website of some of the folks that attends church here and, and uh, the facility and so on to be on there. Our doctrine, uh, our beliefs, uh, and all of that stuff is all uh, on the website. And you can find out all about where we come from, uh, what egg we hatched from. Amen. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just teasing. But anyway, it tells you all about us. So log on to www.theshepherdshouse.net. And that will be hopefully on the screen um, uh, during different times uh, during the service today. So check us out, and I hope that you enjoy that. Or you can follow us also on Facebook. Just look up uh, Jimmy Wilson, Lasco, Kentucky. And uh, you can follow me uh, in some of the posts that I put on there scripture-wise. I don't get a chance to put some on every day, but I put some on uh, every now and then uh, when I can, when I feel led of the Lord. And you can find out what's going on. Uh, kind of in our area that way, and I know it makes it easier to follow a ministry if you know a little bit more about that ministry. So instead of having to watch our program for two years to get to know us, you can watch it today, get on the website, next week you'll know everything there is to know for all 50-something years of me. Uh, so pretty much. But uh, anyway, um, I hope that will be a blessing to you. Now then, uh, if you like to take your word and uh, read along with us, or if you want to read uh, on the screen, we're going to have that on the screen for you so you can follow along with me. I'm going to be preaching about some things today that hopefully will be an encouragement to you. Amen. Hopefully it will cause you to understand what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the, for the pressure that was on him and, and the suffering that he had to go through. Not because I wanted him to suffer, but because he was willing to suffer. Amen. To make the payment for my many sins and my many uh, hindrances and my many offenses. Uh, amen. That I had made. Thank God. Amen. For the plan of salvation and for what Jesus tasted. Amen. For me. Because he tasted for death. None of us, amen, that are born again by the Spirit and the power of God shall ever taste of death. I don't know about you that that makes me want to shout. Amen. Those grave markers uh, that you see out on the hillside, amen, they're markers where our body dies, but our spirit will go and ever be with the Lord. Our consciousness, amen, what makes us up uh, as being a human being, amen, the love and joy, our consciousness, our thinking, and our feeling, amen, will be ever, uh, I'll be able to go and be with the Lord, and we'll graduate this land of sin and sorrow, and 
this body that holds us down, we'll never ache anymore. There'll never be any pain anymore. There'll never be a virus, uh, nor a hospital. There won't be a doctor's office uh, or a doctor's bill. There won't ever be anything, uh, amen, that will ever hinder us uh, anymore when we get to heaven. Praise God. We'll be able to run, amen, the streets of gold. Uh, amen. This sister over here, she won't need a walker, Mona. When you get to heaven, you'll be running in front of me shouting, well, glory. Look at my new legs, everybody. I'm having me a spell. Praise God. We're going to have a great time when we make it to heaven. Uh, we need to keep pressing on for the high mark and the high calling of God. Not let anything or anybody hinder us, uh, amen, for the prize, uh, amen, that is before us uh, because, uh, amen, we've been born of the Spirit uh, and the power of God. I'm so thankful He lives in me. I'm thankful He lives in you that have been born of the Spirit and the power of God. I want to tell you something today, folks. Uh, amen. I, I don't want some old form of godliness and deny the power thereof. I want something I can feel in my heart. I want something that's real. I want something I can take with me to work tomorrow morning. I can lay down with tonight when I get ready to go to sleep. And when the devil shows up, amen, tomorrow I can say greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So back off and back out and get out of here because I know I've got victory in Christ Jesus. I'm more than a conqueror through the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll get somebody else attacking me because I shout and preach too loud. That's all right. Amen. If you have what I got, you shout and dance too. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray someday you'd get it. Amen. Listen, folks, we need, amen, to have victory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Know who you are in Christ. Amen. And worship him in spirit and in truth, not in logic. Amen. In reasoning and coldness and hardness of heart. Amen. But be born of the spirit and the power of God. To be born again means you're reborn. Amen. The old man is dead and then there's a new man resurrected in Christ Jesus. Your thinking is different. And now then you'll have the spirit of God to give you revelations, uh, amen, that will give you joy and peace uh, and to give you strength uh, when you're in the valley and in the hard times. Uh, I would to God that none of us uh, had to go through a valley, but we know we must. What I'm going to be reading about today in the Word of God is a terrible valley that a man called Jesus went through many years ago. And see, the valley he went through wasn't because anything he did it was because of what we did. The valley he went through and the price that he paid wasn't because he'd been bad. It was because I'd been bad and you'd been bad. And mankind, amen, had fallen uh, away from the grace of God and the mercy of God uh, and broken his commandments uh, and turned away and become wayward. Amen, but I want you to know, amen, Jesus, amen, loves us so much. Amen, we was reading this morning in the early service. I've not lost my place. I'll be back in the scripture in a minute. Amen, I read in the early service this morning how the Jesus or the Lord of the vineyard, he came and he saw the fig tree that did not bring forth any fruit. And he said, let's chop this tree down, cast it into the fire. Why cumbereth it the ground or why does it take up space? Amen. And the caretaker of the vineyard, thank God for the caretaker of the vineyard, said, why don't you wait another year and let me dig around that tree and let me fertilize it. Let me dung it. That means fertilize it. And if you don't do anything, then you can cut it down. But let me have a chance to work on it. Oh, thank God that Jesus went to the cross uh, so we'd have an opportunity for him to dig around us uh, and dung us uh, and work on us, uh, amen, so that we would not be thrown away because there's no fruit in our life, because we could not bring forth any honor and praise to God, because we could not bring forth any glory because of our selfishness, uh, amen, because of our arrogance, uh, amen, because of us straying away, amen, from humility and fear of God and respect to the authority that the God of this creation, amen, that made this world, that breathed the breath of life into Adam and caused him to be a living soul. 
amen, breathe into us, amen, because, amen, we'd failed God in so many ways. Jesus said, give me some time to work on them, and I'll see if I can't get them to bring forth some fruit. Thank God, amen, he's a working on me. Thank God, he's a working on you. You may not be what you'd like to be right now, but you get there. Hey, you know, you're getting there, Brother Jimmy. If you've been connected to the vine, the Lord's going to dig around you when you say, I can't stand another hole. I can't take another plow. And the Lord will plow up one side, down the other. Amen. And then he'll bring the hole in. Can I just say this? I was a boy growing up. We would plow down beside the corn or the beans in the garden. Amen. We get to the other side. My granddad take an old mule and a double shovel. And I'd walk right in my granddad's footsteps uh, right in. Or sometimes I'd walk on the other side in the row where he had just plowed. Uh, and I would watch that uh, double shovel. Amen. As, as he called it. Uh, amen. Would plow out the garden. And I'd see those beans move over this way. When he went on one side, when he turned at the end and plowed, I'd see the beans move over the other direction. When he went up the other side, and then sometimes, amen, if the ground was a little bit hard and there were some things that it didn't cover up, he'd come back and take a hole, get in the middle and dig out some of the grass and pull some dirt up, amen, where the plow, amen, didn't get around the beans real good, amen, and then he'd fertilize it. Amen, that's what we need. We need the Lord, uh, amen, to hold out our garden, uh, amen, to plow out the weeds, uh, to pull up the grass, uh, amen, and give us a better chance. Uh, and many people today run from the hole, they run from the plow, the gospel plow, amen, and they tell the preacher, water it down, sugarcoat it. You're upsetting my children because you preach about hell. You're upsetting people because you spit and jump and hoop and holler and say amen too much. Amen, 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 and amen. Thank God and amen. Amen. To get the full meaning, amen, means I'm in agreement uh, and I'm letting you know what I'm telling you is a fact. Amen. Amen. Somebody this morning in church said, you know what? Give me, <laughs> amen. Give me a microphone and I'll sit up here in the crow's nest and holler amen for you, Brother Jimmy, so it won't bother anybody else because you say amen too much. Amen. Amen. Now smoke it in your peace pipe and get over it. You ain't going to change me. You're wasting your time. I'm anointed, full of the Holy Ghost and fire, and I'll shout to get the glory, and then I'm going to run the streets of gold. Hey, glory. Thank God, amen, that I'm going to be free to worship him, and I'm going to be free when I get to heaven. Woo, you don't know what he done for me, amen, when he went to Calgary, amen, you don't know the price of the alabaster box, but I'm glad, amen, he died for me <laughs> to set me free from my sins. Woo, I'll try to behave myself. I ain't going to try too hard, but I'll try a little. <laughs> Yesterday, I was studying and the Lord gave me the scripture, and I thought about it different times through the week, and I was studying yesterday, and I done felt another one of them spells coming on. Amen. Kind of like the old man that was in church. And, amen. The preacher get to preaching, and the Holy Spirit would get to moving, and he'd holler, well, glory. On out in the week, one of the deacons and a couple of the other leaders of the church come to his house, and he was a plowing with old mule, and they come out and they said, now, brother, I know you get carried away, and I know you love the Lord, but every now and then you kind of offensive to some of our visitors that's come in and some of our new people that really don't understand why you get to carrying on and a shouting and say, well, if you don't mind, would you kind of hold it down a little bit? And the old man stood there for just a minute. Tears come up in his eyes and said, boys, would you hold the reins for a minute? I feel another one coming on. <laughs> Well, glory, I'm thankful, uh, amen, I can feel an oven coming on. Yesterday, I felt an oven coming on. I was studying, and I got to listen to gospel music, uh, and the Perry sisters uh, went to sing it. There will be a payday Sunday at the end of the road, and I felt an oven coming on. I was about to get the can't help it. Uh, when you shout, you can't help it. Uh, amen, when you dance, and you can't help it. Uh, amen, when you run, and you can't help it. Uh, I felt a uh, I can't help it coming on. I looked down to the next song. Uh, that was in line, it was resurrection morn. I said, uh-uh, ain't no way. 
I'll tear up my office furniture. Oh, I feel alive when I come in on. I want you to know I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Amen. To man, it's foolishness. But to those of us that's born of the Spirit of God, it's the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm glad. Amen. I can feel something. If I had a coat and I couldn't feel it in the wintertime, I'd throw it in the fireplace and burn the blessed thing up. And if I thought I had salvation and I couldn't feel it, I'd go back to I got something I could feel. Whew. And the day of Pentecost, they didn't sit in the upper room. Amen. To wait so they can say, thank you, dear soul. I had this guy tell me, he said, the early church and the first century Christians didn't act like that. I said, I'm not old enough to remember myself. How they acted. they probably worse than I am. If they read the word, old Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost. Amen. He'd been chicken before, but when the Holy Ghost come into the upper room that day, he stood up and said, these men's not drunk as you suppose. Being it's the third, seeing it's the third hour, I mean 9 a.m. in the morning. He said, but this is a prophecy of the prophet Joel. In the last days I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. My sons and daughters shall prophesy. The old men shall have dreams and the young men shall have visions. And upon my handmaidens and my servants will I pour out of my spirit and they will prophesy. That means to preach and to teach and to foretell future things. Brother Jimmy, that went out when the last apostle died. Where in the world have you been? Get out from under your religious rock and try to find Jesus. The Word says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he said, if I go away, greater things can you do because I go away. Hallelujah. Praise his name in Mark 16. I didn't mean to get in. It's going to get in anyhow. Mark 16 tells us, uh, these signs shall follow them that believe. It didn't say these signs shall follow them that are dead and religious, uh, that are arrogant, and thinks they're the only ones going to make it to heaven. Amen. But these signs shall follow them, amen, that will believe. Amen. It didn't say these signs shall follow them that was baptized, but those that will believe. Amen. Those that will accept the word of God, amen, and believe. All right. John chapter number 19. Praise God. I got part of that out of my system with the exception of about 250 more amens. All right. John chapter number 19 and verse 19 says, And Pilate wrote a title, and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of Jews. I'm going to stop right there for just a minute. That might not mean much to a lot of people, but it means a whole lot to me. Amen. It was Pilate, amen, that wrote that. Amen. It was a heathen. Amen. They wrote that. Amen. Because he saw, amen, what Jesus done, and he had started believing in him, and he wanted everybody to know who he was. Amen. Praise God. Verse number 20. This title then read, Many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. What he done? Most of the time when you see this on television, you'll just see a little subscription up there and then the king of the Jews. But there was three different languages this was in. For everybody that came there, he wanted everybody to know who this is that you're crucifying today. My hands are washed of this, but I want you to know what you're doing and who it is. This is the king of the Jews. Amen. He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings today. Do you know him? I know him. My, my, he's a mighty God. Verse 21. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. In other words, he was saying, 
I'm not just going to say that he said he was the king of Jews. I'm telling you, he is the king of Jews. I'm letting you know, I've seen some things. My wife's had a dream. I'm telling you, this is a good man. I'm telling you, nobody's ever done the miracles this man's ever done before. I'm letting you know, what I've written is what I've written, and I ain't going to change it. I'm here to tell you today, amen, I'm glad that Jesus is still the Son of God. Amen. What I preached, I'm still going to preach. Amen. Many today's watered down the gospel. Amen. They want to have a form of godliness. Amen. To talk about a God. Amen. That's up in the universe somewhere. But they don't want to reference Jesus as being his son and worship him. Jesus said, I am the door. If any man come to me, I, I come to heaven, I, I come to the Father, I'll get it right in a minute, must come by me. He is the door. All others that came before me are thieves and robbers. Wow. Then he put the gospel in a perspective right there. Amen. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts uh, to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was uh, without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and my vesture. They did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw her, saw his mother, excuse me, and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her unto his own home. After this Jesus knowing that all things were accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, I saith, I thirst. Now there was a set Excuse me, there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it on a hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. That's what I'm going to be preaching about today. That's the title of the message. It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Like was to go into uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse number 13. If you turn there with me, please, Colossians 2, verse 13. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against him, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to, the cross, to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Praise God. Now in John chapter number 12, verse 24, if you would, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth a much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my Father honor. Let us pray. Father, in the loving name of Jesus, we come before you this night or this day, asking you, Father, to bless and to move and to anoint, Lord, I pray, the preaching of your word today. Father, I pray, God, that the words that we have read today from the precious word of God, Father, would linger in the hearts of all of us, Lord, from this day henceforth. Lord, that we would never forget what was done on the cross. Father, that we'd never get over, Lord, the great love that was shown and the blood that was shed on the cross that we could be saved. Help us, Lord, to never get over the great sacrifice that the Son of God that was so innocent and so precious, full of love, 
full of mercy, full of wisdom, and full of knowledge. Father, I pray, God, that gave up everything so that we could have everything. Father, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for the plan of salvation for eternal life. We thank you for the payment for our sin that was made on the cross of Calvary. And help us, Lord, to preach this message today. It is finished. And help us, Lord, to stand by the authority of your word, asking you, Lord, uh, for you to bless and to move and to anoint. Hide us again behind the shadow of the cross that no glory would come to me in the flesh. But, Father, that the name of Jesus might be praised, uplifted, and glorified for now and forevermore. For we ask these things in Jesus' precious, holy, and loving name. Amen. Looking back into the Word of God, how that Jesus came. Amen. He was born as a, in a form of a man, half God and half man, amen, so that he would be able to understand what it is, amen, that his people are going through, what it feels like to be happy, what it feels like to be let down, how it feels like, amen, to be belittled, and what it feels like to be persecuted, and what it feels like to suffer pain, and what it feels like to, to receive joy, what it feels like to have comfort from friends, and what it feels like to face loneliness, and in a time of destitution, amen, to be able to understand where his people, amen, are coming from and what they're facing. My, 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 the load, uh, amen, that was put on Jesus, uh, amen, knowing, amen, he was a son of God, knowing that he can never lower his standards, uh, he can never let himself, uh, amen, allow the flesh, uh, amen, to override him, uh, amen, because he had to let God, amen, shine through everywhere as much as possible. But there were some times, amen, that the flesh, uh, amen, hindered him a little bit. He sat uh, in the garden. There that day, amen, before he was crucified, amen, and he wept, amen, till his sweat became as great drops of blood as he finally prayed, Father, I pray this cup. He meant the cup of pain, the cup of anguish, the cup of shame, the cup of sorrow, amen, the taste of death. I pray, Father, that this cup passes from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He stood one time and looked over Jerusalem and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered you as a hen would have gathered her chickens or brood under her wings, and you would not. How many times, uh, amen, Jesus was broken and he cried, uh, amen, because, uh, amen, of, the, of what his children was doing or, or wasn't doing. You know, we, we've talked a lot about ministry and we've talked about uh, uh, people doing foreign missions, and we need to reach out to other countries. And I tip my hat to those. In fact, I give uh, to a ministry that goes over to Haiti uh, and other places uh, uh, that uh, that's ministering to people in other countries. I support that. I'm 100% before it. But I'm going to tell you where most of my money is going to go. It's going right here in the homeland. Amen. There's a great need for mission work. Right here in America, it's a shame that America was the greatest mission uh, a nation on the planet. And today we've got people from other countries that has received salvation that's coming back to America, amen, and trying to teach Christians uh, how to get saved. Now that's a shame, amen, because we've got so many churches today that don't teach a born-again experience, uh, amen, and they try to kick, uh, amen, and fight against somebody that's got the Spirit because they don't understand the Spirit. It don't make any sense to them. They think you've lost your mind and you're crazy. Amen, because you can feel something, they can't feel it. Amen, because they've not received it before. Amen, it's a shame we have to have missionaries, amen, come from Africa back to America, amen, to try to teach us, amen, the plan of salvation, amen, when this is where the biggest ministry started in the first place was America. Isn't that a shame? That's where we're at right now today. I'm putting more time and more effort and more money, amen, in uh, to our domestic areas. Uh, amen, that's why I want to minister on television in Kentucky, in Tennessee, in Chicago, in Michigan, in Indiana, in Wisconsin, uh, amen, in Illinois. Uh, amen, that's why I want to reach out on the Internet. Uh, amen, and I have people that watch our TV program or have in the past, uh, amen, from the Philippines, uh, from India, amen, from Africa. Amen, I found out last week we've had somebody that's tried to uh, come on and watch.
much uh, from, from uh, China. Amen. Thank God. Uh, it was prophesied. I know some of y'all says there's nothing to the prophecies, but I'm going to tell you one that's coming true. Amen. And, and you can say I don't believe in it in this day and time. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong because I'm going to tell you one that happened. Uh, amen. And it's coming to pass. Brother Mike Shrum, pastor of the church in Scottsville, Kentucky, he is holding a revival right here in this church uh, years ago. And one night uh, the Holy Ghost was on him. He turned to me and said, Brother Jimmy, the gospel will go out of this church uh, to the four corners of the earth before Jesus comes back. It tore me all to pieces. And I wondered how in the world uh, would I ever be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to run all over the world. Uh, amen. And that was before all the doors of television had been opened to me. And that was before we went on the Internet uh, and started having people in India, amen, in Africa, and other places, uh, amen, watch the TV program. Uh, now we've heard from China. We are moving on around the planet. Uh, it's getting closer to the end, and the prophecy is going forth. And before long, some of you that sent money in, that's been praying for this ministry, you're going to be a part of a prophecy, amen, because the word's coming out of the four walls of the Shepherd's House Church in Glasgow, Kentucky, and it's going around the world, amen. It may not happen overnight, but I'm going to tell you it's been a lot happened in the last few years. It's been a lot happened since the first of this year, amen. The doors has been open. It's blown my mind. I almost cry about once a month as God opens up another door, and I'm just saying, wow. Amen. I heard uh, somebody say this the other day. I put this statement on Facebook, and I agree with them. It said, you don't ever hear anybody preach out of Luke 16 on television anymore. And I thought about telling them I did last Sunday, and you can watch it next Thursday night in the Glasgow, Kentucky area. Amen. If you want to, because there's one that's still dumb enough to do it. That might be why the Lord, amen, is sending me, amen, on the Internet and everywhere else, because there's still at least one that will preach Luke 16. Amen. Some of y'all thinking, what is Luke 16? Lazarus the rich man. I thought I'd help you out a little bit. Amen. We need to know there's a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. You don't hear anything about hell anymore. Everybody wants to talk about Jesus loves you, Jesus loves me. Fill up my pockets. Hallelujah. You got a new car coming and a yard on the way. And your boyfriend's going to give the old girl up and come back to you. Oh, it makes me want to sick sometimes. I just think I'm going to throw up before I flip the channel. Brother Jimmy? Why don't you send them a message and chew them out because I'm a Christian. Christians don't act like that. That acts like an idiot. Amen. They would do that to somebody. Amen. Just because I don't agree with them, I'm not going to personally attack them. Amen. When Christ lives in you, you're full of love. Amen. thought I'd help everybody out out there that needs a little bit, amen, of, of knowledge because you think you know everything and you know less than anybody I've ever seen. Amen. Isn't that the way that arrogance is? We get all puffed up in ourselves and we think that I have arrived and I know it all. But those, amen, that are walking with Jesus knows you ain't nothing. You're less than nothing. You won't ever be anything. And the only thing you'll ever obtain is the grace that you have by walking and holding to his hand. And you better hold on tight because we're all so weak as and stupid, we couldn't get our way out of a wet paper bag without his help. Amen. That's what I think of myself and my ministry. Amen. And I believe as long as I got that attitude, he's going to keep lifting me up. Amen. When I start thinking I'm somebody, he'll say, I'll put you where the rest of them are, dead and complacent. Because God cannot use somebody that thinks they have arrived. We've got to stay humble and pray and seek the face of God. That's where America's at today. We've chopped up, divided their ministries up, amen, and fought one another. Amen. One preacher preaches with a towel wrapped around his neck and makes everybody mad because he don't think. I've never seen nobody do a uh, preach with a towel around their neck before. What difference it make? I don't care if they got a sack of feet around their neck. If they're anointed and preach the word, amen, I don't care if they stand on their head, lay in the floor, or upside down in the corner. I don't care if they're white, black, or polka dotted. It don't make no difference to me. Amen. The gospel needs to go out today. Amen. Through his people. Uh, amen. That are anointed through the spirit and the power of God. God's rising up an army. God's rising up an army. Amen. That's willing to take. Amen. A, a, a whooping. Uh, amen. For the sake of the gospel. Uh, amen. That's willing. Uh, amen. To be persecuted. Uh, Amen. Some says, well, Brother Jimmy, they'll be able to come from a foreign country anytime and start persecuting the church. Where you been? The church is persecuting the church today. 
Amen. There's people that think that they've been saved uh, trying to persecute the ones, uh, amen, that have been. Uh, amen. And, and, and they think they're doing God the surface, uh, service, Brother Jimmy. Surely they wouldn't do that. That's because you don't know the Word. The Word tells us in the last days they'll be rising up, uh, taking us before councils, uh, putting us to death, uh, and thinking they're doing God justice. Uh, listen to me. Listen to me. They think they're doing God justice. Uh, amen. They want to They want a people that believes in God wants to bring people that believes in Jesus up and put them in jail and put them to death because they don't want to recognize Jesus. They just want to talk about God. And can I go ahead and say this? You could say, I believe in God. You can worship your cow. You can worship your car. You can worship your denomination. You can worship Buddha. You can worship the sun. Amen? And say that they're God. Amen? But to worship Jesus Christ, uh, he's the one that is the Son of God. Amen? That died, resurrected again, uh, made the payment for our sin, uh, and he is the doorway to heaven. Uh, and when you worship him, you're bringing honor to the king, and it upsets the rest of the planet, and it tears up. Uh, amen? I don't know how many denominations. You'd be surprised uh, of the people today, mainline denominations, and I'm not going to call any of them. I'm not going to attack people. Amen. But you need to be finding out what your church, uh, amen, is teaching. But I know of two mainline denominations that does not accept Jesus as a son of God. I know at least one more denomination, a large denomination, that denies the Spirit of God and says that the prophecies uh, and the moving of the Holy Spirit went out when the last apostle died. They deny the Holy Ghost. What does the Bible say? In the last days, there will be people that will have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof of from such, turn away. Amen. That's what the Word says. Amen. So we need, amen, to recognize Jesus as being the doorway to heaven and recognize the Holy Ghost, amen, as being the comforter that Jesus said, I'll go away, but I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll send another comforter and that, will ride, that, that will live inside of you and will lead and guide you into all truths. Hallelujah. Thank God for what we can feel. Thank God for his presence. Uh, amen. Some looks and says, I don't know what. Makes that preacher jump around like a turkey up there. Amen. And I don't understand that. He don't do that when he's cooking barbecue. I'm not anointed, dummy, when I'm cooking barbecue. Somebody the other day said, don't make no sense. You say amen so much. Can you go to Houchins and say, I want bananas, amen, and peanut butter, amen? I ain't anointed when I'm going shopping, dummy. Amen, I'm anointed when I read the Word. Amen, where you been? Amen, you got your head so far in denomination. Amen, that you're blind is a bad thing. You're the only one can see. Amen, we need to get a hold. Amen, of the power of God. Amen, get a hold of something. Amen, that's good. Amen. Amen, praise the Lord. I didn't mean to get into all that, but it's been in there, and I, I, I couldn't leave. I got it out, I guess. Amen, listen, folks. Amen, I said I ain't going to say amen very much anymore. Amen. And then I said, you know what, I ain't going to jump around very much. I ain't very much, just eight or nine times and run around the pool pit a couple times. Uh, amen, I've been pretty good today. If you'd have seen me yesterday in my office, uh, you'd have thought the man's lost his mind. And you might have thought I was making a joke uh, when I said I ain't going to play Resurrection Morn, but I'm serious. I felt it coming home. I'd have tore that place up. I couldn't have stood anymore. I said, Lord, I can't take the more in this, in this flesh. I can't take it anymore. I thank you for what I feel. I thank you for my time of worship. But I better contain myself. Amen. And save a little for another time. Amen. Office furniture is expensive. Amen. And I done rolled that chair back in two and turned around two or three times in that chair. I was uh, doing this and that, uh, blowing like a goose. Amen. Started speaking in tongues. Uh huh. Brother Tim, that went out when the last apostle died. Amen. I must be an apostle because I was doing it yesterday. <sighs> oh, Brother Jimmy, you all caught up in emotion. You call it whatever it is, but God give me all that I can get. Because I'm walking uh, in a world full of darkness. Uh, amen. I'm wading through demons this waist deep. Uh, amen. I need your glory. I need your power. I need a refreshing uh, of the Holy Ghost in my life. Uh, I need to be touched. Uh, put me under the fountain and drown me in your glory. <laughs> Woo! Some says, Lord, uh, I want something from you. I want it all. I want all I can get till I get to glory. And then fill me up uh, with the rest of it. Ooh, amen, I don't think, amen, a human being can contain all there is to get from God. 
Some says, I went to the altar and I finally got it all. You didn't do it. You got all that God could allow you to have without killing you. He may, but we get to the other side. And then God shall reveal himself. The Bible says, amen, only the pure in heart shall see God. Only the born of the Spirit of God shall see him. Everybody's going to see Jesus. But on that day, I want you to get this. Amen. When our judgment comes and Jesus looks for our name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. And he reads our name. And he says, you've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We're going to go in that great big room. 1,500 miles long, 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles deep. And wait till the Father says, children, I'm going to reveal all of me to you because you were persecuted and laughed at. You were beaten for the sake of the gospel, and yet you did not deny me. Some of you were beheaded. Some of you were scorned. But I want you to see my, uh, my presence. Amen. And all of heaven, amen, will fall in a silence. And after we get a good look at the Father, we'll take our crowns, and we'll take them off our head, and we'll throw him at the feet of Jesus and we'll bow down and give him honor and praise and glory for being the risen Savior that died and resurrected and now he's sitting at the right hand of the impotent and impotent father that's sitting on the throne of glory. Woo. Listen, folks, I want you to know today there's a God that loves us. Amen. I don't get all my words proper every now and then. You can send me an email and tell me I don't say words right and I got my hair combed on the wrong side and I ain't much of a Christian because I'm partly bald. If you want to, but I'm going to keep on preaching. Hey man, you can tell me I'm too fat if you want to. Hey man, all I can say is I'll let this bowl of jelly just keep on rolling for the Lord. And just call me a holy roller. Hey man, it'll be all right. We need the power of God. We need more of God. We don't need to run from God. And they ain't nobody going to intimidate me. Woo, from preaching the gospel. Woo. I was preaching a few years ago and I had this nut. I had this person that came to church. And they just, every time I say that, my wife goes, ooh. Hey man kept kicking the pew. Amen, I get to preach them real hard, they get to kicking. One day I was preaching, I just looked them straight in the face, I said, you can kick all you want to, but I ain't going to lighten up. Amen, I didn't lighten up either. Their face got red. Amen, they stayed with me for several years. They finally left, but they, they toughened up. They know they's going to have to toughen up or they can leave. I'm kind of like the preacher, John Parrish, Pastor John Parrish from Owen, Oklahoma. He said in the last uh, uh, 40 years, he pastored six churches. All of them had been in the same building. They left and he stayed. Amen. All I can say is we need the word. We need the power of God. We need it shut down, hot and heavy and straight. We need to be turned around and the gospel plow, plowed deep and plowed hard. We need the presence of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost in our churches. And we need to get under the spout, everybody does. So we can feel the presence of God. Amen. That's what I like about some of the praise and worship songs. Amen. They go to praising Jesus. Amen. As being Lord and King. And then they go to saying, Lord, I want a deep presence of God in my life. Send me deeper. Crucify me. That means kill the outward appearance. Kill the, out, the inward longings of the fleshly man. And let the spiritual man dance in your presence and become more like you. Amen. When I see myself, I'm my worst critic. Some of y'all that likes to criticize me think you've done a good job. You ain't near as good at it as I am. I can find more fault in me than any of you can. I know you're thinking, Brother Jimmy, I'll send you a list of all your faults. It ain't as big as my list because I don't like me. I like the spiritual man, but the fleshly man I ain't got much use for. Amen? Because he gets in my way all the time. He hinders me more than anybody I've ever seen in my life. Amen? I keep telling the, the fleshly man, you need to get up and get over it, boy. You need to go on. You need to suck up your bottom lip. Amen? What they're doing, they're doing because they're ignorant. Get over it and go on. And the spiritual man saying, come on, come on, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. The fleshly man is saying, oh, don't you get up there and preach like you did last week. Oh, you'll run another note from the church. 
you ain't got the opportunity to run very many more off. <laughs> you done pulled the feathers out, and the poor old chicken ain't got but three, four feathers left in it. Don't run off the ones you got. I, listen, folks, I may run off everybody, amen, and I, and I may preach it hard, and I may preach it straight, but if I don't get before you into the kingdom of God, the Lord's going to say you done what you could with what you had to do with in the time that you was on the planet, uh, and I'm proud of you. Amen, I'd rather have four make it, no, we've got a lot more than that. I'm just using that as an illustration. Amen, I'd rather have four make it into heaven, amen, it's to have 5,000 in my ministry, and every one of them denying the Spirit of God and don't know how to get saved. Amen. We don't make it by numbers. Uh, amen. You don't make it by how much money comes in the mailbox. Uh, you make it by whether or not you're hooked up uh, and anointed. Uh, amen. Can I just go ahead and say this to help you out a little bit? I ain't the best looking fella in the world. I mean, I really ain't. I tease everybody all the time, say I'm good looking. But I know I ain't the best looking fella there is in the world. I realize that. I'm not the most educated person that there is in the world. I don't have the ability to articulate words and get them out to move people like some people does, but I'm anointed. God, let me have my anointed. Let me have more anointed. It don't matter if I can't articulate like I need to, but those that's born of the Spirit of God, I can say things backwards and sideways. And if you've been born of the Spirit of God, you can say, I know what you mean. I got it. <laughs> I didn't get it because of the way you brought it up, but I got it because of what was coming in the atmosphere and what I felt in my spirit, uh, and I heard from heaven. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> Woo. <sighs> I feel another coming on. <laughs> well, go <glory. laughs> Brother Jimmy, you're getting emotional again. No, I'm getting spiritual. When I get spiritual, then I get emotional. But I'm anointed. <laughs> Ooh, thank God you don't have to be pretty to preach. Thank God you don't have to be the most educated to preach. I mean, thank God you don't have to be the best speaker to articulate everything in such a way that everybody can understand. But you need to be anointed by the power of God. You need to be hooked up. And you need to pray. Amen. The ones that's ever been uh, jealous of me has never been jealous. Uh, amen. Of the way I look, uh, they've never been jealous. Uh, amen. By the way that I speak, uh, they're jealous over the anointing that I've got. They can have it too if they push away pornography. Amen. Quit lusting over everybody's wife that comes around in the country. Amen. Quit cussing and lying and cheating and stealing and live right. Uh, amen. Be willing to take a persecution, get up in the pulpit and look the devil in the eye and say, Pfft. Amen. Listen, and don't back up. Amen. You can get the anointing of God too when you give your heart to God. Ah. Mm. He's going to anoint you. Woo. If you give your heart to your church, you ain't going to get nothing. Amen. Because that building's dead. Amen. That certificate you got hanging on the wall, you can take that and a dollar and a half, go get you a cup of coffee. I'm not telling you you don't need to get educated. We need to get all the education that we can. Amen. But you better be careful. Amen. Some people, a few people, amen, can take the education that they receive and the anointing they got for God, put them together, and it manifests into our great ministry. And I've seen some that went and got educated and lost their bit of knowledge. Or not, not knowledge, lost their bit of the anointing they had. They got all kinds of uh, education. Amen. They can absolutely entice. Amen. They can intrigue. They can inspire. Amen. But they don't move anything because there's no power. Now, Brother Jimmy, you make people mad. I'm moving you. <laughs> amen. Some says it ain't all about emotion. When you get mad at me preaching, amen. That's emotion. You're having an emotional fit. It's just that mine's got the spirit backing it up and yours has got the devil doing it. <laughs> Brother Jimmy, you are a nut, but I'm screwed on the right bolt. Amen. That's the main thing. Boy, I'm telling you what, this sure ain't turned out like I thought it was going to. Can I go ahead and preach a little more? I ain't done. This is just coming in a little spurts, and here comes the next spurt. Amen. Looking into the Word of God, amen, what we were reading while I go out of Colossians uh, 2, verse number 13, it says, I'm going to read it again real quickly, and you being dead... In your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. What are you trying to say? Can I say this right now for, to help you out just a little bit? 
Amen. Listen to me for a minute. Amen. Some today wants to talk about the past that they had. Some wants to talk about uh, the past, amen, of the sins that you used to have. What I want to shout over today is I no longer have one. Amen, I don't have a past. My past is covered in the blood, cast in the sea, amen, to never, as far as the east is in the west, excuse me, almost got out of the scripture there and got a quotation that somebody quoted to the scripture. Cast as far as the east is from the west, not to be remembered against us anymore is what the word says. Amen. So therefore, I don't have a past. Some says I'm having a hard time getting over my past. Get saved, amen, and forget it because God has covered it up and he'll never remember it against you anymore. Don't let the devil use it against you. Amen. I don't have a past. You write that down somewhere, amen, beside the scripture that I read, and you circle it or put it in parentheses. Jesus nailed all of our trespasses to his cross and, his, and our offenses to his cross. I don't have a past. See, when you get born by the Spirit of God, you lose your past and you gain a future. Amen. Those that's not been saved, you've got a past and you have no future. Amen. I hope you get the depth of that. I'm going to go over that two or three times because uh, it may take a time or two, amen, for the rain to seek into the hard ground. Amen. When you get saved, you no longer have a past. You've got a future. And when you're not saved, you've got a past with no future. Amen. I want a future. And my past is behind me. It's been nailed to his cross. All of the uh, offenses, uh, all of the ordinances of man, all of the laws and rules uh, that's impossible for us to keep has been nailed to his cross. Praise God. And I don't have a past anymore. Look over to somebody today and say, get over my past. I don't have one. Now look the other way and say, guess what? I want to invite you to my future. Because I'm going to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. I'm going to walk in victory. I'm going to walk with my head up shouting and daydreaming about the things that's coming in glory. It was an old uh, gospel song, not a country song, gospel song years ago that came out, amen, and said, if heaven is a dream, friend, let me dream on. Amen, I'm just going to tell you, don't try to keep me from dreaming because I don't have nothing behind me to go back to because my past was crucified at an altar of prayer in 1982 in a bathroom, amen, a little farmhouse in Allen County, Kentucky, amen, on a hillside up there. That house has burned down since then. It's gone, but what I got in my heart is still real. Amen, thank God. Amen, I lost my past that day. <laughs> <laughs> my past was taken away. I no longer have one anymore. And God gave me a brand new future to build on and to live for and to believe in and to wait for. And I'm going to say, press on, children. Press on to the high mark of the high calling of God. Amen. In Christ Jesus, if you have attained, amen, through mercy and grace at a place called Calvary, amen, 2,000 years ago. And what he did was for you, the weakest in the land can find salvation. Amen. The one today, amen, that's mentally challenged can still find salvation amen through Christ Jesus amen I don't have a past anymore did you get what I'm saying I don't have a past anymore but I've got a future come on and go with me I won't take you to a land <laughs> amen on the other side of death chilly waters take you to a land that there'll never be any pain any sorrow take you to a place amen where we can see God as he is and worship the son of the Most High God, Jesus, when the angels will be flying through the air saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb that was slain and resurrected three days later, and now it is finished. It's over. The trials are behind him, and the trials are behind the church. Let's press on in the future because it's finished. Stand with me if you will. I'm Pastor Jimmy Wilson from the Shepherd's House Non-Denominational Church in Glasgow, Kentucky. I'm going to be bringing you a hard, straightforward, Kentucky-style preaching, Southern Kentucky-style preaching, and I'm going to be preaching it just like it is with a non-denominational approach to the Word of God, telling it like it is. Some folks say they laugh a while, and they cry a while, and they shout a while. I hope that you enjoy it. We'll be right here on...
today. I hope it was a blessing to you. I want to give you a, a, a way that you can send money in uh, to donate to help us stay on the air. And I'm not a prosperity preacher, and I, I, I'm not going to beg for money or anything like that, but I do want to give you an opportunity to send money. If you prayerfully uh, have been led by the Holy Spirit to give, it takes money to keep this on the air uh, and to come into your home each week. And... Uh, the Bible says, uh, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And that's in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33. And I believe if we'll live right, do what God tells us to do, uh, pay our tithes uh, and be faithful to our local church, and then give as the Holy Spirit leads you to give to ministries, then God will bless you. Amen. Uh, and I, I know that uh, there's some of you that enjoys the program, and this is a way that you can support by financially supporting and uh, sending money in uh, to our program. And I'm going to tell you where you can send this. You can send it to Jimmy Wilson Ministries, Post Office Box 1346, Glasgow, Kentucky, 42142. Again, that's Jimmy Wilson Ministries, Post Office Box 1346, Glasgow, G-L-A-S-G-O-W, Kentucky, 42142. Also, I'd love to hear from you. You can uh, email me at pastor at glasgow-ky.com. That's pastor at glasgow-ky.com. And we'd love to hear from you. I hope this has uh, been a blessing to you, and we could sure use your support. And I want to ask you to pray about this and pray that God would lead you uh, about giving and supporting the program. We need to get the Word of God out any way that we possibly can. This thing's drawing to an end, and there's souls out there that are lost. There's souls out there that are they're not hearing the truth. And you know by what I'm saying, there's a lot of stuff that's on television uh, prosperity preaching and a lot of stuff that doesn't line up with the Word of God. It's not about uh, getting rich and it's not about money. It's about knowing that we've been born again by the Spirit of God and that we're ready to meet God when the trumpet blows or when we breathe our last breath. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and after death is the judgment. So we need to be getting the word out to the lost and dying world and telling those that are hurting there's hope in Christ Jesus. Help me get this message out to the multitudes. God bless you.